Good morning, Malta and Gozo, and welcome to another episode of Love and Daily. I'm your host, Sam Vasallo, joined with Julian Bonici, and here are today's headlines. So, Labour Party owes Malta an apology, former president says. Meanwhile, over 115,000 people in Malta are victims of a 2009 Facebook leak. Meanwhile, four shearwaters have died after getting caught on a fishing line off Comino, and three boats carrying 270 migrants have disembarked in Lampedusa. And lastly, Lynn Foray Kirkop has cancelled her plans to run for the Labour Party. Yeah, on to our first story. So Malta's former president, Marie Louise Colero Preca, has urged the Labour Party and its supporters to apologise to the country given recent you know, re revelations and arrests, particularly that of Keach Kembri, the former Prime Minister's Chief of Staff. Um, she sort of um, wrote on an opinion piece on more today saying you know, how the party is in desperate need um, of soul searching and needs to des decide, decide whether it is a power hungry um, party directed by surveys or whether it will be directed by political and social and ethical um, values. Um, it, it's a you know it's a really s a strong statement from the former president who was a, a, a former minister and a major um, figure in the Labour Party. She did sort of concede, you know, that you know the in there are there is some work being done to reform institutions and make um, really vital, really vital changes. But you know that's sort of nothing without effective. Um, checks and balances and accountability and transparency in the system itself. And Marie Louise Colero Preco is the latest, you know, in a, in a long line, you know, of Labour Party figures who have either come out to apologise or at least, you know, distance themselves from Joseph Muscat's administration. It's really positive signs, you know, um, up until a few, few years ago, I would have never thought, you know, that a, a Labour Party member would dare speak out against against their party and in particular Joseph Muscat. So it's a good sign that times are changing. However, on the other hand, I do just want to, you know, um, make it clear that I don't personally think that, you know, issuing an apology after, you know, eight to ten years of, of an action, you know, um, shouldn't absolve your, yourself of any wrongdoing. It's really good to come forward and apologize. But, you know, it doesn't mean you shouldn't apologize yourself for, for, the, for the things you've done. Indeed, I mean, you know, uh, she was president from uh, 2014 to 2019, um, during which, you know, there was the break of Panama Papers, numerous government scandals, the assassination of a journalist, and she was often very, you know, ambiguous and unclear, um, opaque, I would say, just calling for national unity when, whenever this stuff arises. And it would be really great if, you know, we could raise our standards and uh, speak out when you're in positions of power and not, you know, after you've stepped down and after years and years of inaction, as you've said. Uh, moving on to our next story. So over 115,000 people in Malta are victims of a 2019 Facebook leak. So this was a report by Business Insider. Essentially, 23% of Malta's population is affected in this leak. So essentially, um, this data dump was discovered last Saturday involving uh, 533 million Facebook users. and this Essentially, it uh, divulged personal details on a hacker's website, including uh, dates of birth, location of the users, um, in some cases, uh, email address, and also numbers. So, you know, as, as much as Malta was affected, it's nowhere near Italy, which, with more than half the population being affected. There's Netherlands, Luxembourg, France, a lot of countries uh, involved, unfortunately. So this was discovered by uh, Alan Gala. He's a CTO of a cybercrime uh, intelligence company. And he found it essentially after he discovered this bot, which allowed people to essentially view uh, sensitive information of Facebook users at a price. Now, Facebook has reacted to this and essentially wrote it off saying that it had um, fixed this vulnerability back in 2019. And while, you know, this, this, is, this is good news, it's, it's, I think it's a stock reminder not to share, overshare your details and make sure that you're protected as much as possible. Yeah, no, I think that's 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 the main main thrust of this. You know, it's a really unfortunate um, hack. You know, where a lot of people ha have become victims. You know, where their personal information has been shared. You know, on an open hackers forum. You know, for anyone to gain to gain access to. However, um, most people use social media a lot. It's about seventy nine percent use social media daily. Oftentimes, we overshare on these platforms, providing personal information. You name it, um, on these platforms, and maybe. We should learn that you know this is a bit of a possibility, and to start being a little bit more responsible 
um, with our data. We'll obviously see how this is going, going to progress. Mortis police, is, um, Mortis police are yet to comment on the issue, so we'll be waiting, waiting to hear from them at least a bit more. Um, on to our next case, quite, quite, a, quite, quite, a, quite a sad story. Um, yesterday, several shearwater birds died after they were caught in a fishing line off the coast of Comino. Um, the news erupted, you know, once um, a video was uploaded to social media from, from hunters in the air, ironically, who, who went to go save, save the birds. Um, there were about 15 um, who were trapped uh, along the line and four um, sadly died. And um, police were, were called to the scene sort of understand, you know, what happened and what went on. The video itself um, is quite sad. You know, you see these, these sort of men, you know, frantically trying to pull these these struggling birds out of the water, cutting the line, but obviously in some cases there's no avail. It's actually it's a nice thing, obviously seeing um, seeing, the, seeing these men you know rush to at least re rescue these animals. However, I think it also raises like, you know a bit of a debate on on how our practices at least can can affect um, the environment around us. You know, um, I know it's a you know, it's an old tradition fishing in Malta, but you know we need to be at least, or at least authorities need to start being at least a bit more careful that we're not damaging the environment as we're doing it. Keeping uh, in the sea, and for another tragic story, I'd say, three boats uh, that were carrying uh, 270 migrants have officially disembarked in Lampedusa. So um, essentially, over the Easter weekend, there were these three boats. Um, who alerted authorities in Italy and Malta, but unfortunately um, there was inaction until uh, yesterday. So this is a, a sort of a sad deja vu, I would say, from last Easter when we had a similar situation where boats were out at sea, alerted authorities, but um, there was inaction. So. Unfortunately, last year there were 12 people who died at sea. Luckily, this year no one has reported, um, no, no life has been reported lost at sea. Um, I think, you know, I think it's quite timely with, with Easter weekend when we Catholics celebrate, you know, um, uh, Jesus, you know, dying for, for, for Catholic sins. And, and uh, in fact, uh, outspoken TV host Pepe Azzopardi penned a really strong poem kind of, um, you know, bringing this to light, saying, you know, if Jesus were to, were to come again um, and come as a migrant, you know, at the sea, we would probably shut our, our borders to him and essentially that we haven't learned anything from um, that, that time 2,000 years ago. Yeah, no, I guess, I mean, as I pointed out, I got quite a lot of um, reactions um, um, to that post on the case itself. I think what's quite interesting about it, it shows the whole confusion, right, about the, the migration um, scenario. From, for starters, NGOs and governments seemingly can't even agree on where the search and rescue zone is because you have NGOs claiming these boats were well inside um, the SAR and then government sources telling us they absolutely weren't. Um, and on a, a second point, I think what it proves is how little headway we're actually making with, 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 the, with the situation, right? You know, we've been in a, in a sort of migration crisis for the better part of two years, particularly ever since Italy um, started having a stronger um, policy to, to migration. And the situation just keeps on getting exacerbated with, you know, people's lives just floating on a boat outside stranded at sea with nobody willing to help them and no solutions being being found. Obviously, I really do understand people's concerns that Malta cannot be expected to shoulder this burden um, completely completely on its own. So it's about time, you know, you know, action is taken and things actually start to happen and start to get moving. Um, on to our last story, um, I guess a positive one, but also kind of disappointing because a blast from Eurovision Spas, Lynn for uh, Kurkop has decided that she will withdraw her candidature for the Labour Party for the next general election. Eurovision fans, I'm sure, are pretty disappointed. She's one of three um, former Eurovision contestants currently contesting in the next general election. Obviously, there's Claudette um, Buttigieg, who is currently um, Malta's deputy speaker and a PNMP. She rose to fame um, with her hit Desire. There's also Julie Zara of On, On Again, Off Again fame. She's running for... Um, the, the PN as well, but um, Lim for uh, Kirkop had actually come to the nation's attention in 2003 with her edition of um, To Dream Again, um, sort of infamously because she didn't do so well. But you know, I guess everybody was looking forward to seeing you know 
somebody who only we associate with Eurovision doing something completely different. You know, to be fair, she's a graduated lawyer, government lawyer. She's done a lot of actual work on, on policy. So it would actually been interesting to see um, a candidate like that um, run in the election. Um, I mean, just maybe a bit of a question what it might pose. I mean, Kirkop actually didn't give any reasons um, for um, her reason to withdraw her, her candidature. However, it might speak at least a little bit to women's involvement in politics. You know, we're talking about gender quotas and stuff like that. Um, and there's a lot of criticism that the actual barriers for getting women into politics still haven't been addressed. So there might be some issue like that um, around it for, um, for that. I don't know what you think about it. It, it, it always makes me so sad when someone, you know, we have such little women in politics and every time that one has withdrawn and she's not the first one to, to, to kind of announce a candidacy and then withdraw it. So I don't know. I think I think uh, I, I would have hoped with this new proposal of, of gender quotas that that women would be coming out in scores, but clearly not. And as you said, there, there are definitely some hurdles that need to be addressed before this is a reality of Malta. So hopefully uh, people aren't disencouraged by her, you know, withdrawing her candidacy and we get some more women in politics and and our house of representatives so that's all from us here on love and daily have a day full of love